You know that calisthenics is great for body weight control, athleticism, and flexibility, but you also know that building muscle with calisthenics is much less efficient and less straightforward than lifting weights in a gym. Being aware of this has probably made you struggle at deciding what you want to prioritize between the two styles of training. Well, I was in your situation a couple of years ago when I first discovered calisthenics, and I sure as hell was looking for a way to get the best of both worlds. I was already going to the gym with my friends and I wanted to add some calisthenics on the side so I could eventually show off some skills. You know how it is. Don't pretend that's not why you started too. But anyways, back then, nobody around me knew what calisthenics was, so I would just do my gym workouts with my friends, and then at home when nobody was looking, I'd attempt to copy a bunch of the stuff I saw on social media. Now in retrospect, that was one of the stupidest ways to go about it. So in today's video, we're going to go through the best ways of mixing weightlifting with calisthenics, and getting the best of both worlds without injuring yourself due to overtraining. Make sure you stick to the end if you want to know which method is more suitable for you. Back to business, we ain't sleeping for the shit. Some be beaming, body weak, and I'm just leaking when I'm hit. Full of envy while they staring at The first method is to alternate between typical gym exercises and their calisthenics equivalents within a same workout. For example, a normal bodybuilding push workout usually has both a horizontal pushing movement like the dumbbell bench press and a vertical pushing movement like the overhead press. You can replace one of them with the bodyweight equivalent. So you could start your workout with the dumbbell bench press and then follow it up with pike push-ups as your vertical pushing movement. Since it's complicated to add weight on a bodyweight exercise, a good way to apply progressive overload is through increasing the amount of reps and when it gets too easy, you move on to a harder variation. For the pike push-ups, you can elevate your feet, and when that gets easy, you can do a wall handstand push-up. The second method involves dedicating the first part of your workout to calisthenic skills training, and then doing your bodybuilding gym exercises after. Now you have to be smart about this, because it's easy to go overboard and end up with way too much volume in a single workout. To avoid that, you need to be knowledgeable about the skill you're trying to learn, you need to know what muscle groups it involves so that you don't overtrain those muscles. If you're trying to learn the front lever for example, you must understand that it mainly involves the lats. So you start your workout with some front lever holds, front lever raises, etc. And once you get to the bodybuilding part of your workout, don't start training your lats again, or at least don't prioritize it as much as the other muscles that haven't been worked in your calisthenics part of the workout yet. The last method is a bit more complex, as it is separated in phases and requires more planning. In this style of programming, you split your training into two blocks, a hypertrophy phase and a strength phase. In the hypertrophy phase, your goal is to sort of prime your body and prepare it for the strength phase. You're mainly going to be lifting weights in order to build muscle and you will give extra attention to the muscles that are important for the calisthenic skills you want to learn. If we continue with the front lever example, that would mean that you would want to emphasize growing bigger and stronger lats on the days where you're training back. Then after the hypertrophy phase, you will follow up with a strength phase where you will greatly diminish the gym training and focus much more on directly training the calisthenic skills that you planned on learning. Now let's briefly go over which one you should choose. If you're a calisthenics beginner, definitely go for the first method of alternating between gym exercises and their calisthenics equivalents. This method is especially good for beginners because it works well with the calisthenics basics like push-ups, pull-ups, dips, pike push-ups, etc. It gets a bit less applicable when you start wanting to learn skills. The second method of dedicating the beginning of your workouts to skill training is good for two types of people. An intermediate athlete who doesn't mind gaining skills at a slightly slower rate in exchange for building a better, more balanced physique. And a more advanced athlete who wants to maintain his skills while he focuses on building his physique. Finally, the third method can work for any level but requires much more thinking ahead and more knowledge. It's good if your main priority is learning skills, but you still get to put on some muscle at the same time, just not in a way that is as balanced as the second method. Okay guys, that's today's video. Comment down below which method you think you're going to try and make sure you like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Peace.